processes. So now what happens after the virus has gained entry into the host cell? So it has its RNA, it has the RIP enzymes here. So we should know the function of all these enzymes so that we can inhibit the function of these enzymes. The first enzyme is your R or reverse transcriptase. So what does the reverse transcriptase do? So let's see about the structure of reverse transcriptase. The reverse transcriptase also has two parts. The polymerase region and the hRNAs region. Example, this is a RNA and you want to synthesize a complementary DNA from this RNA. So this polymerase goes and acts on this RNA to form a complementary DNA. So that is the function of the polymerase. But what happens is that even after the formation of the DNA, it gets attached to the RNA as such. So this hRNAs goes and acts here and cleaves this and makes the complementary DNA to come apart from this region. So that is the function of the hRNAs H. So we have group of drugs which act on the reverse transcriptase for that which we need to know the structure of the polymerase. So this has two subunits, the P66 subunit and the P51 subunit. The P66 subunit consists of three parts. It consists of the palm, it consists of fingers and it consists of thumb. The P66 domain consists of palm, fingers and thumb. So we should know the parts of the P66 domain. So we have certain drugs called nucleoside or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors and non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. So we will first see how your nucleoside or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors act. If we take this complementary DNA, how this polymerase makes this complementary DNA? So you have a sugar domain or you have a sugar unit attached to a base which is attached to a phosphate, sugar base and phosphate. So for example, this is a nucleotide domain. It has a hydroxyl group which is attached to a nucleotide. So this favors the attachment of your next nucleotide. This hydroxyl domain prevents the anchoring for the next nucleotide. So the next nucleotide also has a hydroxyl domain which provides anchoring for the next nucleotide sequence. So this, the importance of this hydroxyl group is we need to understand for designing drugs which can act against the HIV. So now we have nucleotide or nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors which can get attached here at this part. So what happens? It is an analog of your nucleoside or nucleotide but it gets attachment here and it does not have a OH group. It lacks a OH group. So what happens when there is no OH group? So the further elongation is stopped, the, see the further elongation is stopped, the further elongation does not take place or we can give a acido group there and the further elongation will be stopped. So we are basically cheating the virus itself, so that is what we are doing with this group of drugs. So these group of drugs are called nucleoside, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors okay so the drugs which fall under this category are the most important drugs called zidovudine stavudine stavudine so these are some of the drugs which fall under this group nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors the next group is non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. So the word itself tells that it is not a nucleoside analog to get attached without a hydroxyl group to this elongation. So where does this go and attach itself? So it affects the P66 subunit of the polymerase part. 
okay so your non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors they affect the p66 domain of the polymerase part of the reverse transcriptase so what they affect is the thumb region of the p66 domain so this becomes hyper extended extended so when the thumb domain of the p66 part of the polymerase region of the reverse transcriptase happens it does not form its function of forming the complementary dna so that is why it is called non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and the most important drugs in this are nevirapine and efavirenz these two drugs are most important drugs which fall under this category non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors so this is one step which we should know the first or the primary function of the reverse transcriptase is formation of the pro viral dna now we have the double stranded dna ready for attachment with our dna here so how does it go and attach to our dna which is present so here comes the next enzyme that is the integrase enzyme so integrate integration so it helps in integration of this pro viral dna or viral dna to our dna so how does it do that now the work of your reverse transcriptase enzyme has finished and next the pro viral dna has to get attached to our dna so how does it do that so we remember the acronym rip right so now the function of reverse transcriptase has finished now the function of integrase comes into action so what happens is that this integrase consists of two parts one it has a domain which is responsible for nicking the dna and next is ligating the dna so for example this is our dna first the nicking part of the integrase acts on our dna and it nicks our dna here and takes it out okay then it brings the pro viral dna here and ligates it with our dna so this is the function of the integrase enzyme which is present in the hiv so we have particular drugs which can prevent the action of integrase itself like raltigravir raltigravir can prevent the function of integrase but we should know that there are no drugs which can prevent or which can revert this function of the integrase enzyme after it gets integrated into our host cell so that is very important to know next after it gets integrated into our dna it forms mrna and there are other structural proteins which are formed so this dna it forms various polypeptides so we should know the genes which are present in the dna so that we can know about the polypeptides which are formed so these genes are very important first is the gag gene next is the pol gene next is the env gene so this polypeptide is responsible the for formation of various proteins like p7 p24 p7 p24 so this polypeptide is formed from the gag this pol gene is responsible remember the pool of genes which are involved here the r i n p that is responsible and e n v is responsible for the g p 41 and g p 120 so this structural proteins or structural enzymes are not formed as it is they are formed from the genes as polypeptides for example the polypeptide from which the g p 41 and g p 120 is formed is called g p 160 so when the protease the final p of the rip attacks the polypeptides and cleaves it various structural proteins are formed so cleaving of the precursor polypeptide is the function of protease 
and the final group of drugs act on this function of protease. So they block the function of protease. So these drugs are indinaver, saquinaver, darunaver, amprinaver and various drugs which are present. These are called protease inhibitors. So we have seen the replication cycle of HIV now. So after the formation of all these genes what will happen is that it, the virus will be assembled here. The virus will be assembled with a nucleocapsid, two strands of RNA and the RIP enzymes and it leaves the host cell by stealing its lipid membrane and a new HIV is formed. Hence, in this lecture now we have seen how the attachment of the virus takes place, how the replication takes place and how it gets attached with our DNA and how it comes out of the cell. So this is in short the replication cycle of HIV. So now let's recap the drugs which act at various stages of the HIV. First is the attachment inhibitors attachment inhibitors. So those are your Ibalizumab, Maraviroc, Vicriviroc and then comes your fusion inhibitors, Enfuvertide, Enfuvertide and then nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors like your zidovudine, stavudine, didanosin, etc. Then is your nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors, tenofovir. Then is the integrase inhibitor raltigravir and here we have non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors like your efavirenz and nevirapine and then you have protease inhibitors which are your indinaver, darunaver, saquinaver, amprinaver etc. So there are various clinical points associated with this these drugs. First is the clinical point associated with Maraviroc always do tropism testing before prescribing Maraviroc. So why to do tropism testing is that this Maraviroc is a CCR5 inhibitor. So tropism, the cells having tropism towards the CCR5 will only be effective in case of Maraviroc. So we should do tropism testing and we, sh we should see that uh, the patient is getting other drugs or not. So the drug is given in a dose of 300 mg. So if some drugs like CYP3A4 inhibitors are given, we should increase the dosage to 600 mg. So we should know the concomitant drugs which, we, which are being given. We should do tropism testing before giving a drug. So there are various clinical points which are associated with each one of the drug which will be discussed in other so lectures. An inherent knowledge of these drugs are very much important to understand and culminate the HIV from our body. And next we should know about the heart therapy and the post exposure prophylaxis which will be seen in the next series of lectures. So stay tuned to this channel for more videos and in depth view on HIV. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to my channel.